see what about you you decided you were confused i don't know what's the status now um <clears throat> I will actually, you know, um, there are a couple of things that I was uh, working on because there are two things that I have to do uh, right now. One is um, decide uh, whether I want to continue with PMP or doing uh, architecture, you know, um, that Toja. So I was looking into that. So uh, I think anything I need a project management in place. So I will continue this. I'll okay. need for both, yeah. Any anyway, management job or any kind of job, uh, you know, senior level, you need this. So that's right. why I joined today. I said, let me join. But okay. I will, uh, I will try to finish those uh, question uh, by this weekend or something like at least chapter um, one to three. I'll do. Okay, that's good. Okay, uh, I think uh, we should probably begin. So uh, last time we discussed questions, uh, sorry, uh, topics related to integration management. So does anyone has any questions related to integration before we move to the scope management? Uh, I have one question. It's not actually like exact question, but it's more of like how to handle it. Uh, when in the integration, we have like each and every process. It has like many questions, many inputs, and uh, uh, you know, input input data points. How to remember them? I didn't get your question about input data points. What do you mean by input data points? Like for example, if you are talking about the uh, just one minute. For example, let's say if we are talking about uh, uh, controlling and managing it. Are you talking about uh, direct and manage uh, yes. project work process? Yes. Okay. So we have all the points. We have see okay, like it goes to the scope as well. It goes to the uh, you know uh, cost as well. Like if there's any change request or if there's any change in the PMIS. It goes back actually like the whole cycle again. Absolutely, right. The only thing is like, is there any easy way to remember it? So yes, well, sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, like you, I read it, but truly speaking, the chapter four, I read it almost like two times. Right. And so, that was the only reason actually like last week I was like, you know, incomplete uh, on chapter four for reading. Okay. Okay. So integration management, you know, as we as you might have already gone through videos and stuff so integration is that you are trying to integrate all the remaining knowledge areas so let's say that if we did monitor and control project work so it is not it is monitoring and controlling each and every piece which is like scope also cost also time also so for integration it's all the remaining nine knowledge areas so you don't have to specifically memorize that okay, what all things are uh, getting updated. Integration means that it is updating everything which is in your uh, um, in your knowledge areas. So think like that. It's not being specific. You can ignore that piece. However, if your question was that, how can I remember input tools and outputs of a process? That's a separate question. Yeah, main main thing is like like if you even if you look at any of the diagram in PMBOK, mm -hmm. uh, it has like output to many uh, uh, different areas, like five point one or five point two or like almost up to up to like all of them. Right. So see, pr practically, th those diagrams are not a good way to memorize the thing. ITTOs are something which could be memorized. See, and I, I, I don't know if you, I've already told that in my videos also, I'm, I'm not really sure about it. But if you are attempting a particular question, and uh, let, let's say that you need to understand that which of the, like you always use elimination technique. So let's say if there are four options, let's say A is uh, enterprise environmental factors, B is 
organizational process as a C is something. And the, the question is, which of the following is not an input to direct and manage project work? Then you need to ask that question from yourself and see what are the inputs which are making sense. Is Do we really think so that this particular thing would be an input? Do, do, do we need it? If you think we don't need it, then you can eliminate it. So the diagrams in integration management, they are actually inputs, tools, and outputs too. Like they are mixed and matched. So you can ignore those pieces. However, I the only reason I also wanted to discuss and this class would be more effective if we start talking about the real questions. Because I want to show you that how I attempt to a particular question. So <clears throat> if you see that and then you can see, you can develop how I am approaching a particular question and the same way you can try to attempt the questions in the similar manner. Yeah, I understand. And, and unfortunately, actually, this week I have not uh, taken care of the questions. Vignesh, uh, you did some questions online. Do you Did you find any problem or any issue in any particular question which we can discuss right now? Uh, you mean to say the 25 questions? No, not just 25 questions. So you uh, mean from something I, outside? Yeah, whatever you did. If you did it from first 25, mm -hmm. if that question is, let's say, from first four chapters only, like till integration or till scope, mm -hmm. which you have already read, then, you know, we can uh, probably discuss it right now. Yeah. Or from any other source, from wherever you did, but any questions which I can show you that, you know, how I am approaching to a problem. Um, uh, Varun, actually, uh, in your f free 25 questions, right, there were few questions which I felt like, uh, which uh, I felt it new, like I have not... Uh, the, those topics were looking new to me so but i'm not sure like whether uh, it's only for me or it's like it's a general one do you remember the okay let's say this is the question question number three uh, this is from uh, integration i believe mm -hmm. i'm reading it you are a project manager in a product based company soon you are planning to launch a new product in the market and you are looking for a sponsor who can fund this project. Sponsor of your pre uh, previous project has shown interest in this new product and you want to get him on board with this idea. However, before taking any decision, the sponsor asks you to put together a document for go-no-go no go decision. What document are you putting together? Okay, four options are A, project charter, B, business case, C project management plan and D request for proposal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so first of all, it is let's and now I'm going to show you how I am approaching to this question. The question says that, um, uh, let me read it. Soon you are planning to launch a new product in the market and you're looking for a sponsor who can fund this project. Sponsor of your previous project has shown interest in this new product and you want to get him on board with this idea. However, before taking any decision, the sponsors ask you to put together a document for go, no go decision. What document are you putting together? So first of all, you have not even started the project. So it's like pre-initiation phase. So option number A was project charter. Can this be a document? No, it's a... Uh, this question. Yeah, no. No, it cannot be that document because you have not even reached at that stage so that is not an option b is business case can this be an option yes uh, you know it could be an option because if you see one of the inputs to develop project charter process is business case so it might be a case option c is project management plan can this be an option no no definitely because again it's pre-initiation stage and you have not even reached the planning stage you have not even completed initiation uh, project management plan, there is no point. So that is also eliminated. Option number D is request for proposal. Can this be an option? Yes. I thought yes. I thought request for proposal as one of the option. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where, yeah, where, RFC. Uh, RFP, request for proposal. Uh, oh, so yeah. Okay, awesome. Uh, so these are the 
two uh, like there are only two options left a business case and b is request for proposal so any time so what is the request for proposal can anyone explain me that it 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 tells you pros and cons uh, usually that is why you know it, it gives you more idea about the, what are the advantage of the product that's what i believe you know so i haven't read i haven't read any chapters here but i'm i'm just telling you with my what experience i have varun so varun i will add actually on this uh, it's my version again uh, correct me if i am wrong um, so request of proposal means like whenever someone needs a product or a kind of a special service let's say if i take actually an example of a car company says okay i need the tires on my car mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. these are the specifications okay then they go to each uh, manufacturer and they ah. submit their ah. proposal saying that okay you ask you are asking me this kind of uh, properties in your product i can deliver it with this is the estimated price and i can deliver or scale up my facility or i can you know if you need let's say 10000 most probably with the coming market you might be selling let's say 15000 but i can still like you know cope up with that requirement and plus if you maybe like i i can give you some uh, um discount or maybe for free i can enhance your uh, quality i am not saying that it is approved but it is more of like as a added benefit is whether it's up to the customer mm -hmm. to accept it or not okay okay avarun uh, yeah, can i yeah, right, go ahead sure sure go ahead uh, if you think of request for proposal before that it should be a project so that i can request someone to propose. absolutely i have to analyze whether i can develop by in house or out, you know like outsource it so right for that it should be a project right so I think absolutely it's this case very good excellent explanation request for proposal uh, sumit whatever you explained and uh, uh, whatever you were saying that's absolutely correct but as rekha mentioned the request for proposal is you need you need a project to in order to request for something this is a pre initiation stage where you have not even uh, talked about uh, procurements whether you are doing it in house or uh, are you, would you probably do it uh, outsource it to someone else if you outsource it to someone else then probably you need request for proposal but what if if you are not outsourcing it then it is being done in house and sponsor in this is in this case i'm not saying sponsor is someone who is outside your organization or sponsor is someone who is within your organization but business case is the document which which talks about the strategic value of this project why you are doing this project and which will help the sponsor to take a decision whether he should fund this or he should not fund this i i agree I, actually i was just giving you explanation on rfp no no your explanation was correct uh, absolutely it was correct but see yeah. we have not even raised at that point yeah the first uh, thing in any uh, project or anything is uh, is a uh, comes like a business case right like what is what is the exact case it is and once you have the project then you start working on the request for proposal right absolutely mm. uh, and then uh, if they want the charter we give the charter and then goes to project planning and then continues that Yeah, I'm just trying to look for another question. Yeah, Varun, uh, uh, the question number five. Uh, can you just uh, give an uh, suggestion question like five? In three yeah. questions. Yeah, three questions. Question number five. That is time management. We have not done that yet. Not done that yet, right? Okay, and. Yeah, so question number twenty-two. And how? Uh, one second. How about question number seven? Uh, is it uh, the same? Same like that? That is. beta distribution that is also we have not done done yet. yet okay so that's what like these questions i was not able to answer because uh, it sounded new so i don't know how to calculate these things so yeah okay yeah go ahead uh, go ahead varun go ahead with you yeah, I, i will do one thing i'll probably you know uh, go into let's say integration management only okay okay let's it's even like i have the access and do one of the questions okay
Okay, so question number two. Tom is managing a computer graphics project. One of his team members realized that there is a serious problem and it will cause a delay that could harm the project business. Even worse was that it will take another three days for him to fully assess the impact of the issue. What is the best way to handle this type of situations? I repeat, Tom is managing a computer graphics project. One of his team members realized that there is a serious problem and it will cause a delay that could harm the project business. Even worse was that it will take another three days for him to fully assess the impact of the issue. What is the best way to handle this type of situation? A. Submit the change request form to the change control board. Can this be an option? No, because no. he doesn't know the impact or what is he, his complete analysis is not done yet. Okay. Option number B, meet with the stakeholders and tell them that there is a problem and you need two more days to get them the information they need. Can this be an option? It could be. Okay. Option C. By using project charter, show the stakeholders that he has the authority to make decisions. Can this be an option? No. 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 Okay. D. Update the lessons learned document and add it to your organizational process asset so that you can use it for future projects. Can this no. be an option? No. No. The problem is no. not known yet. <laughs> Absolutely. No. Absolutely. So see, in this way, you eliminated all the three options and you know that only option number two makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Let's do one more question and then we will probably talk about the business. I just, let's, it's more interactive when we do question and it's more helpful actually. Sure. Thomas is a project manager on a construction project. The electrician is already in the process of laying out the wiring. When the customer comes to him with a change request, that he needs additional outlets. And Thomas thinks that it will increase the cost of his electrical work. What is the first thing Thomas should do? A, refer to the project management plan to see uh, how this change can be handled. Varun, Varun, one second, Varun. Can you read the question again? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Thomas is a project manager on a construction project. The electrician is already in the process of laying out the wiring. When the customer comes to him with a change request that he needs additional outlets and Thomas thinks that it will increase the cost of the electrical work, what is the first thing Thomas should do? A. Refer to the project management plan to see how this change can be handled. Can this be an option? Could be. Could be. Could be. Yeah, could be. Yeah, it's a okay, let's keep it. option. Yeah. B. Refuse to make the change because by increasing the cost of the project, it is making it is making Thomas project over budget. Can this be a choice? No, because okay. it's not mm. clear in my opinion that the customer might be willing to pay for it. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. Option C, refer to the contract to see if there is any clause like this or not. Can this be a choice? Mm. Refer, refer to contract? Yes. Mm. No. No, because it's actually a, another thing is like it's a customer, so changes can happen. Okay. I think yes. Okay, uh, Rekha, you think yes? Why? Um, if when you read the question, did you say anything about the contract? No, I didn't say anything like that. Okay, then it's not an option. If it is really a <laughs> involves contract, then we have to look at the terms. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think you are on the right stage. You have you the way you are studying your approach is is good. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry. No. Shishi, go ahead. No, I was not clear about the contract uh, option. What is the option that uh, it says contract? It says refer to the contract to see original if contract. Is, okay, okay. To see if there is any clause like this or not. Yeah, I mean uh, one one has to refer that. That is important. Okay, you know? so let's keep that option. B, make the change since the customer has requested it. Can this be an option? Can I read this uh, fourth one again? Make, make the, the change. change since the customer has requested it. No, absolutely no. No, absolutely no. no because it adds so, a second. Okay, yeah. so you have left with two options. 
option a is saying to refer to project management plan option b is saying refer to the contract which one is better mm. i think if he has authority is he project manager already then uh, he should refer to contract if he's not a project manager in the beginning i, I don't remember you said he, is, he, he is a project manager manager oh, is a okay. project so, manager okay same then he should refer to contract okay yeah Rita, can you give uh, your explanation once again yes the project management plan will have like uh, uh, things like how you're going to do how you're managing things and what what is the quality needed and what is the process you're going to use so i think contract refer the contract is the one which gives you terms and conditions how you manage things on uh, any additional request comes in absolutely Or, absolutely that is that is the correct explanation so it's actually the project management plan which talks about how will you proceed in situations like these let's say if you need to do a change request if you need to go through the change control board it is the project management plan where it is mentioned that in situation in scenarios like these you need to go and and talk to ccb about this okay so we are, he has to check with the project management plan in order to check if he can uh, uh, introduce any changes um, even additional yeah. outlets yeah at that point of time if you can introduce any change or not mm -hmm. it is actually the project management plan okay. contract was just there to confuse you by it it may have that information it may not have that information in question in, in the question itself we never talked about any contract or anything such like that okay but if if it's 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 like a but definitely in pmis world you will always have a project management plan for a project okay so uh, varun i have a question like in that contract um still we can consider like if they have uh, any uh, possibility of making uh, additional outlets or if they have restricted uh for any cost or something like that so how do we know that because so vignesh yeah this is sumit again it actually like uh, i do some of the few contracts with my for my company mainly mm -hmm. the small ones mm -hmm. so normally like uh, uh, varun like we don't mention anything related to like you know if there is any change comes what to do or uh, should, should we say yes or no in the contract contract says only one thing is like which is, which is a correct thing actually is uh, that whenever there is a change request follow the process okay and the okay. processes are mentioned in the annexers or maybe go to the project plan okay got you absolutely so even, this is even if you look world. at it like vignesh mm -hmm. uh, the contract will never even scope the uh, actual scope of the work okay it will only say you something like okay you are buying a flat Mm -hmm. with two bedroom mm -hmm. okay it will never say how many outlets oh got you mm -hmm. so which is basically a high level requirement but uh, project management or uh, project uh, plan will say what actually the features and everything how many outlets and all and uh, the project if i remember correctly on the fourth chapter project management plan it says clearly like how to handle the resolutions in case of a conflict Okay. Absolutely. Yep. So this will See, go into that criteria. Mm, got it. Think of project management plan as the grandfather. All the remaining things like procurement, communication, HR, conflicts, everything. This is part of their sub plans, which in turn is part of project management plan. So let's say you were talking about conflicts. So conflict is something which would be part of uh, human resource management plan, and human resource management plan is part of the project management plan. So, so Varun, just just to add, actually, mm -hmm. like one more case case scenario to it. So, can I add something like, let's say, in the same case, one of your vendor says, okay, I was not able to deliver your product or accessories that you need to complete your product, let's say, in time because of some machinery failure or something else. So, what is the best option for the project manager to do in that case? So, again, it will go. come back to the project management plan absolutely as a backup yes. plan like what is the backup plan you have right so it it's also about uh, like uh, project management plan also deals with 
uh, what if if your deliverable is not accepted? Whatever if the customer if the vendor is not able to fulfill your requirement, how will you do? What will you do in those scenarios? So that is part of uh, uh, the project management plan. Varun, I have a question, Varun. Sure. Um, what? When you have a contract signed, right? So when you delay work or not able to do a work, so it falls under a dispute, right? Like because you right. are not able to deliver. So you refer to a contract agreement, right? At that time, or you refer to the uh, project management plan at that time. See, uh, if you let's say if there are two options, you are being very specific. So yes. in this case, in your example, it would be the agreement. But if let's say agreement is not an option, then project management plan would be your next best choice. Yes, because that is like a, if procurement if it is not under procurement, then PMP is the one which which is like a you know referable refer for everything. But if they if I have a agreement, then it agreement is relevant to PMP, right? Project management plan. Absolutely. Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, any questions? Now let's move to scope management knowledge area. Any questions you have related to scope? It was one of the very important topics. There were so many questions which were about uh, um, um, requirements, how you gather requirements, what are the different tools and techniques which you use, and work breakdown structure. You will get so many questions from work breakdown structure. And then there were uh, a process. Uh, then there was uh, like an output, which was a scope statement. So there were questions. You will see a lot of questions on scope statement. And finally, and the most important, I would say, is the validate scope, which is uh, which process tells you about how your deliverables would be accepted. Like what are the situations? Like um, uh, it's like the UAT, which is user acceptance testing. So any questions related to scope management knowledge area? Yeah, Varun, I have a question. Uh, when I went through the plan scope management, uh, for me, it sounds more like the same uh, section planning in integration management. So how do you differentiate uh, these two? Uh, I mean, like a develop project management plan and uh, the difference between uh, develop management, develop project management plan and uh, plan scope management. Who will answer this? Uh, your project management plan will take care for each and every item in the project. Mm -hmm. It includes your scope, cost, time, resources, HR. You know, you, you tell it, it is everything is there. Whereas scope is just limited to scope. Absolutely. So, so as now, name... uh, I have a question. Uh, I haven't read the scope management. Uh, I did for uh, ITPM a few years ago. So I'm just, uh, I always get this mind, like, you know, mindset about, you know, scope. And then we have to write objective and then we have to write uh, scope in the charter, right? And I find a little bit uh, similarities in both. So now how do we differentiate that? That's my question. Okay, before we come to that, uh, Vignesh, are you clear with the concept about uh, project management plan and scope management plan? Yeah, Varun, I just got an idea which you mean to say like scope is one of the uh, one of the section in uh, develop project management plan. Absolutely. So, right. okay, so, uh, if you see but still if you have like the collection requirement and... Um, uh, create defines uh, that scope uh, definition and uh, these things right so I'm like bit confused uh, see okay well, let, let, can, can, can I explain it sure, sure, yeah. Sure. Go ahead, go ahead. yeah Sumit uh, if possible can you just give me uh, an example I think that would uh, give us more uh, idea yeah I, I will definitely try that okay now let's say your requirement is you want to eat a pizza for dinner okay 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 now you start saying that okay my project plan is get the pizza get the pizza it should cost let's say 20 dollars for four people and it should be arriving at eight o'clock 
Okay. Okay. Your project plan. Yeah. Project management plan. Now, when you say twenty dollar, okay. Now, when you say scope, or you drill down into the scope within the project management, you say, okay, twenty dollar means I can actually. Okay. No, first of all, I want actually something like veggies or non-veg or whatever you want. Okay. I want it from the uh, Pizza Hut or I want it from Domino's or maybe from a local store. Those things will define what is your scope. Whereas the getting the project or getting a pizza within twenty dollar, that's your project management plan to define where to get it. Okay. If my uh, like say order order it from one store, if they are closed or they say wait, they are not able to deliver it, what is the next plan? That will come into your project management plan. But defining the properties of the pizza that you want will come into the scope. Okay, got you. Varun, your comments, please. No comments. I cannot explain better than this. <laughs> this is the right way. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, Varun, can you just uh, or Varun or Sumit, anyone uh, regarding the WPS? Can you add some more points on that? Uh, I didn't uh, get that. Work breakdown structure. Yeah, work. Yes, Sumit, have you read scope? Yes. Perfect. And Rekha is Rekha. You can also chime in. I'm pretty sure you would know all the answers to these. Uh, yes, sir. Whenever you are, yes. Yeah. Sir, go ahead, please. Uh, if you that WBS is basically like a decomposition of work. You decompose the work up to like um, it can go up to eighty hours or forty hours. It depends, but it's up to a manageable uh, manageable. You know, like a deliverable to the client. So that's how you divide. But you won't do the duration at WBS level. But duration will go to uh, time management. So up to a deliverable stage, you you categorize and deliver. So it goes up to like uh, decompose to a level where you can deliver to the client. I think that is what is WBS is basically. And, and Rika, what is that level called? WBS package. Work package, right. Yes. Uh, work package, sorry. And you have like a plan package also in between that the plan package is like you decompose when it's like a rolling wave kind of it. At the time, at the moment you decompose it it's because at the beginning of the project you, you won't know. So you have a plan package that is between the WBS and the work package there is a plan package. So the cost factor will be involved in all these levels, and you have a unique identifier that is called a control. Uh, one is for the WBS ID, and the other one is for a account that is for the control account. So with that, you roll up and calculate the cost for each work package, and that becomes your uh, how you get, how you get into the cost estimate for that project. And you add contingency reserve too. So you will read about this in the next chapter. But you should know about how the code of account also comes in place. Okay. Basically, in a very detailed yeah, manner. detailed manner. Yeah. That's so basically, it is a work breakdown. Um, you know, bit, uh, the task task breakdown breakdown. No, no, no. There's a difference between no. This is wrong. No. So the what task breakdown, breakdown is something different. So that's why I wanted to, you know, stop you right away. Task. I would say, I would say it is the smallest unit of the deliverable item that. Yeah, deliver the deliverable or uh, uh, objects for four objectives. Like if you have uh, one deliverable, you have to break it down into four or five, whatever that uh, you have deliverable. You have to. Okay, let's say let's take that. the same example of pizza, mm -hmm. what Sumit talked about. Okay. How yeah. would you? Let's say you want to eat a pizza. That's your project. So, mm -hmm. what what all things would be part of WPS? Give me an example. The material used for the pizza. Oh, that is. If, if you are ordering, yeah. I think. <laughs> we are ordering. <laughs> let's say, are ordering. Let's say let's say let's say let's say we are cooking pizza. Let's say it's that would be a good, better example. Let's say cooking pizza is the project for you. So let's say uh, at the first level, what all items should come? Uh, 
list the items right for the food like what we need for the pizza yeah dough butter or cheese and <laughs> all the vegetables which you want to add or is okay, it so like one section let's say it's raw material okay and in raw material i'm saying cheese veggies um oil and uh, all those things okay what could be next item the um the preparation of that you know like uh, you need a uh, vessels or something like utensils for that yeah okay no, so okay. let's say utensils is another section the, and then the in utensils in utensils we have uh, let's say plates uh, spoons uh, okay. and all of those things whatever we require okay third thing yes uh, shashi was saying something what is the third so, thing third thing is uh, um, you know just uh, um, manage uh, what decide what you need to do exactly cook like what kind of pizza you want to cook you know like a decision making like whether you want no. to cook a pepperoni pizza or what pizza we haven't decided that right yeah we <laughs> haven't decided yet uh, but uh, that won't be part of it that won't be part of it okay that will come mm-hmm. before because see, you already done with the requirements so the wps you already know what you're clearly vision for so oh, okay it's so already the, the scope is already there okay Okay. No, already yeah. defined the scope here. You yeah. are actually uh, decomposing the requirements into yeah, deliverables. Are, so we did uh, did the preparation. We have the list of the things. Now we want to cook cook pizza. You know, in um, we no, need something we are, else. No, we are just we are just writing the steps to how to make pizza. So let's mm-hmm. say if it is already requirement is let's say veggie pizza. What are the things? How, how will you make it? The list down of the steps, or I would say like the um, you know menu book procedure. You mean to say procedure? No. If you look at the cookery book, right? Okay. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like uh, procedure. It says, it says one thing is like it says a picture. It has that a uh, small synopsis, something like uh, okay, pizza is Italian dish and all those things. Then it says ingredients. it will list loud list it down right then it will say procedure mhm okay so yeah. so what you are trying to say is that procedure would be mentioned in wbs no what i am saying to say i am mentioned to say is the <coughs> the all the items that you need if you divide by the category they will be your wbs package and the inside it it will be a uh, wbs item something like utensils you need a pizza base uh, that uh, that stone or or uh, you know uh, oven this becomes one package when then you need the ingredients and in in the ingredients you can also subdivide them into saying that organic or non organic something like that uh, varun i am not actually putting in more because i heard you um, cooking chicken today <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't see. want to put the you know words into the uh, other <laughs> mouth. It was actually nicely explained, Vignesh. Yeah. WBS is is something which you call it as deliverable. So and it is hundred percent of scope. We call it WBS as hundred percent scope. So whatever you think you would be required for your project, you list it down as a deliverable in a WBS. The lowest level of the WBS is known as work package. What they are trying to do is that you cannot break down the. You actually can break down a work package, but the main purpose is let's say, let's say my one of my deliverable is plate. Can you break down the plate into smaller parts, like how that plate was formed? Do you really care about? No, that? no, no. But you do care about it. That okay, if you need to buy a plate for it. it will cost you let's say 10 dollars okay okay so you all you always decompose up to a level where you can estimate for time and cost so if i say plate this means i can get a plate for 10 dollars or it will to take me let's say 30 minutes to buy a plate so that is work package oh so when okay i stopped shashi, got it the reason i stopped shashi was 
because she was talking about tasks. So task yeah. is something. No, that was the wrong we word. We break yeah. down. The, yeah, which is activities which you do. So activity or procedures, how you will reach up to. So how you will cook it is actually a list of activities which will be part of time management knowledge area, and that is not part of your WBS. Uh, but uh, Varun. When you say like a WBS, right? It already is a structure, decomposed structure, right? In the question, when they say like a decomposing the WBS means what it is? Uh, in those questions, they are probably trying to say that they are decomposing the uh, deliverables or work package into activities. So let's okay. say if one of my deliverable is plate, my activity would be that uh, Varun to go. Uh, Varun to open the door. Varun to go down. Varun to sit in the car. Varun to go to Giant. Varun to use the credit card to pay the bill. All of these are activities in order to achieve my deliverable, which is a plate. Okay, so it is possible they can ask a question, decomposing the uh, WPS, and find something else. So that means that I. I should know that they are talking about activities. They are not talking about the scope. No, they, this means that they are talking about uh, uh, activities actually. So if you okay. see, um, um, if you see define activities process uh, in time management, one of the tool is decomposition. So yes. why it is because they are decomposing that WBS. If you see the input to define activities, that is scope baseline, and you know scope baseline is project scope statement, WBS and WBS dictionary. So you use WBS from defined activities and you decompose it to further into the activity list. Okay, if there is a, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, not, um, I'm not sure about the question, but I, I know something relevant to this. So if you have a problem in your schedule or in your uh, work um, doing the activity, that means, um, but you're the person who did according to the WBS structure. That means where the mistake will be. The mistake will be in before WBS or. So Rekha, you are actually, you are. I know you are where you are trying to reach. You are talking about a question which you probably might have done while practicing. So I, I, I really can't answer until unless I read that question. So. Okay. Because the sentence or line could be tricky, which I can't say that, okay, the problem is in the WBS when the problem might be in something else. So I really have to, from next time, this is your homework. Whatever question you do, if you if you're not convinced with the application, uh, with the explanation on the website, mark it, email it to me or set up a time where, you know, you and me can do a one-on-one -on -one and go for it. Okay. I can do that. Thank you. No worries. Yeah. Anyone else with any question in scope management knowledge area? Just one generic question: Is it miss, uh, can be can, is it included in the scope management that someone like who is doing the scope management or the project manager can miss something? Yeah. Is a, anybody is, can it miss. Is a, it is an in scope activity for the PMP. I didn't get your question. Someone can you explain more. Like normally when we do, uh, I'm talking about the practical life, people do miss some of the scope activities. Right. So is that missing thing, is mm -hmm. the in scope for the PMP? Or it is actually saying that whatever has been documented and approved, there is nothing missed. Or there is no scope for missing. No, no, there, there could be few, there could be like for example, uh, and, and Rekha was also talking about a similar question. So what they will do is they'll give you a scenario and they will say uh, th that you did everything and still the customer is not convinced because you missed something. What did you miss? So then you have to read that question and find out that, okay, this was something which was missed. So as a, like you can miss things, but you remember you have to wear the PMI hat, which means if you are missing something, you need to communicate to the people. You need to uh, find the correct way. You need to do a change control process and all of those things. You can miss things, but 
and uh, it all depends on how they are framing the question also sometimes they will say that uh, you did what was required what was mentioned in the uh, in the uh, requirements document but but the customer is not happy with the deliverable uh, what what would you do in this scenario so if you did everything as per the requirements document you did a good job you you did your part if the customer is not happy with the quality then it's it's something else so again it depends from question to question there's no right or wrong in this i have a question to you varun is that possible to do a, a work without a wbs it is it is possible so so what is I mean, the purpose uh, of wbs then like uh, wbs is for, to make sure that we are getting a buy in from the team and also from the uh, customer right no no so, no it is basically for team but if team. if yeah it is majorly for team but you can show it to the customer also and it's not a mandatory document um so um if you if you are not doing without wps is not a problem or Again, normally nor, normally customer doesn't ask for the wps right it's more of time let's say if okay as a project manager let's say if i have activity for like four months project and i have a team member like three three team member size okay i'm talking about a software project if i don't create and assign a resource and even the time even if it is fake believe me in practical life people take their own time customer doesn't say that this this part of my code should be developed by person a or b they are looking for overall time saying that okay after 3 months we are looking at this product intermediately we can review it what is the progress but they don't care what part is created by whom okay and and rekha what you are asking uh one of the answers could be that you since you didn't make the wbs that's why there was problem in in a particular question which they are probably describing but yes. uh, again it depends from question to question it it may it uh, if you ask me a question whether it is required i would say no it is not a mandatory re requirement but yes it may be a problem which is described in a scenario in a particular question that could be an answer um, and uh, wbs will help you in uh, cost management right like at least to mm -hmm. get a um, so it is one of the uh, requirement to do helpful for the estimate right so even if you are saying that it is not really required for resources and uh, uh, buy in from the team but still to calculate the estimate it will be helpful right it would be helpful yeah but if you think from this perspective let's say if i didn't created the wbs and i straight away from requirements document i went to the project schedule then all those estimates could be come from the project schedule also oh it can come from schedule yes, too yes absolutely okay 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 and uh, and mm -hmm. varun i have another question what happens if one of the um, one of the expense or one of the cost is not met in the wbs structure will the project will still continue or will not continue or when we do the monitor i didn't get your question explain the question like in more detail if, yes uh, so you have a control account in each and every deliverable mm -hmm. right so right. if you are not able to meet that one of the work package deliverable with the co within the cost so right when we will get for this um, problem like when we'll face it when we are doing the monitoring and controlling of the mm -hmm. cost map right yep when you cost are doing the control cost okay so when you do the control cost you are trying to compare your planned versus actual your plan versus actual is what you have planned to do and what you have actually done so let's say you plan to do this particular control account for $100 but you were not able to complete that and you only did let's say for $50 this means that you know there is something missing 
So you have to go back, communicate to customer, do a change request, find the impact analysis and do all of those things. And one more question, Varun. Uh, the scope management is not one of the input in uh, risk register. Why? Can you give me? Because one of the question has been asked in, I think I'm not in here or where, uh, in risk register or identifying the risk, there are, they gave four options. And one is not uh, input for risk. Identifying scope, the baseline, risk. scope baseline is an input to identify risk. So there is scope. In risk. They gave like a three of them. One is the quality management plan. That uh, is also there. And then scope management plan. Um, but there is uh, scope baseline. There is no scope management plan, but there is scope baseline into it. So scope why, baseline is actually covering that. So why scope management plan is not there? But cost management plan and quality, um, even the schedule management plan is there. But right. why? Scope management plan is not there. That is what my question is. Quality management right. plan is goes as an input. Why scope yes. alone is not going? Okay, so that piece, the scope management plan is encompassed in the scope baseline. So scope baseline has three things, which is your WBS, your WBS dictionary, and your third is the scope statement. So all of those things, specifically your scope statement, that will cover your... Uh, risk oh. part okay okay and why the quality management goes in as an input can you please give us explanation because the sure. book doesn't give me much uh, tell me let's say if I say um, I uh, let's say you know I want a pizza which is a 4.5 rating that's my quality standard and let's say, Rekha, you are the one who is actually cooking that pizza. And and I'm sorry to say, but let's say that uh, that pizza is not of good quality. I didn't like it. Okay. So when I specifically told that I want some a pizza which is of at least 4.5 rating, and let's say you did something with 2.0 rating, then it's, it's a quality issue, right? I asked for 4.5, you gave me 2.5 or 2.0. Or 2 so that's a risk to my project that you you were not able to you know deliver me what I was asking as per my quality standards. Okay. Uh, that is uh, to measure the risk. You need that. So that is why probably it's in there, right? The risk. Yeah, management. to identify the risk, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Because measuring the risk is something else. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to even say now because uh, uh, all these, uh, you know, definitions we have to remember and all that, you know, to go through the PIM book. So it's just uh, I'm trying to simplify the answer. Varun, how much you recommend um, each and every definitions for uh, even for each of the knowledge areas, like each of the process groups? Like I'm not saying the process group also. Each and every knowledge like um, definitions are important for all the inputs. Like uh, uh, when you say about. See, definitions are important, but. Very, very important. <laughs> definitions are important, but I'm not saying your main concept should not be focused just on definition. Your main focus should be that why this particular thing is an input. Why have you used this tool? That is more important. Your most of the questions would be scenario based where they will explain the scenario and they will ask which particular input is, is being explained in the question or which particular tool has been used in this question. So if let's say I'm talking about a tool sensitivity analysis. So I've written the definition of sensitivity analysis in the question. So if you don't know the definition, then you cannot answer this question. Yeah, and sometimes they just want to confuse you uh, with the similar words, and at that time it helps if you know the definition. You know, so I think that's how, I mean, in general, I, I had that problems. So, um, give you an example, uh, Varun, um, to identify a stakeholder. Right, they gave like a four points in that in a, in a particular question. All the four points looks important to me. They said like what is the key factor for identifying the stakeholder. So that is why I'm saying like do I need to really uh, 
uh, be thorough with what is the key benefit from each of these activities like even if you're, if i say of a defined activity so what is the key benefit for this something like that because how many questions will be like this similar pattern like see like last time when my student like one of my student who gave the exam he told me that he is getting many questions about the plans so when i say plan like the things which are part of cost management plan or things which are not part of quality management plan and stuff like that so these definitions are important i cannot say that you should neglect it straight away there were questions asking about the nado diagram sensitivity analysis state definitions were there so they have been asking questions on definitions i i, I don't have a, a a number because they they'll give you a scenario in which they are explaining a definition to you and they will ask what definition or what particular output or deliverable is being used is being explained okay this is something which you cannot neglect to okay, be precise so, okay so these are the things which i need to fine tune myself to uh, get into the exam when i when i said something about uh, tougher one on the book so they were a lot of questions on this kind of theory like a little i won't say theory means theory but it's like a definition based question that's why i'm asking you like how far i have to be ready with this okay i'll i'll, I'll read it okay guys i'm i'm actually getting late um so um i i think we had a very good discussion like i would say till now it has been like the best discussion we had for me because we discussed a lot of good points questions and, yeah uh, my recommendation would be that within next tuesday um time management is of course something which you should do but uh, our main focus in that one hour should be the questions to to be done so for the more and more questions we do the better it is so if you if you do more question then it it is easier for you to understand so i think our next session should be q and a session and not just time management uh but rest it's up to you guys what to do i'm just giving out uh, some recommendation sure sure varun yeah thank you and, uh, thank you so much yeah uh, thank you varun yeah thank you varun thanks vignesh yeah no problem thank you <laughs> thank, you, thank you everyone yeah and especially thanks to uh, reka i think because she asked lots of questions today yeah i really appreciate that <laughs> thank you so much reka i think so more time you start doing spent. questions yeah definitely you start doing questions you will also start asking questions definitely definitely orun <laughs> <laughs> yeah i am i'm sorry question. about that uh, <laughs> uh, you should appreciate me for yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely definitely questions questions are never dumb <laughs> yeah that's why i was like uh, requesting everyone to join because then only then we will get lots of questions so yeah people who are actually interested will join <laughs> <laughs> yeah i hope so <laughs> long journey yeah like, uh, so much determination required so everyone has to be interested whoever is interested will continue on this mm -hmm. got it okay thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you. Thank, Thank you, you everyone for joining. Yeah. Okay guys, thanks bye. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Good night.